Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Simon Duel Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Judges 11 through 12 and Luke 6, 1 through 26. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Judges 11 Jephthah the Gladiite was a mighty warrior. His father was a Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove a Jephthah away. You are not going to get an inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Sometime later, when the Ammonites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Galad went to get Joseph and form uh, the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander, so we can fight the Ammonites. And Jephthah said to them, Don't you hate me, and didn't you drive me out from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, Nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites, and you will be head over all of us who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, the Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord at Mesthah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the Ammonite kings with the question, what do you have against me that you have attacked my country? The king of the Ammonites answered Jephthah's messengers. When Israel came up out of Egypt, they took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, all the way to the Jordan. Now give it back peacefully. Jephthah then sent back messengers to the Ammonite kings, saying, This is what Jephthah says. Israel did not take the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites, but when they came up out of Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and on to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Give us permission to go through your country. But the king of Edom would not listen. They sent also to the king of Moab, and he refused. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Next they traveled through the wilderness, skirted the lands of Edom and Moab, passed along the eastern side of the country of Moab, and camped on the other side of the Arnon. They did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was its border. Then Israel sent messengers to Shahan, king of the Ammonites, who ruled in Heshbon, and said to him, Let us pass through your country to our place. Shion, however, did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. He mustered all his troops and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. Then the Lord God of Israel 
gave Shihon and his whole army into Israel's hands, and they defeated them. Israel took over all the land of the Amorites who lived in that country, capturing all of it for the Aaronon to the Jebuk and from the desert to the Jordan. Now, since the Lord, the God of Israel, has driven the Amalekites out before his people, Israel, what right have you to take it over? Will you not take what your God, uh, Cheshmash, gives you? Likewise, whatever the Lord our God has given us, we will possess. Are you any better than Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever quarrel with Israel or fight with them? For three hundred years Israel occupied Heshbon, Aror, and the surrounding settlements, and all the towns along the Arnon. Why didn't you retake them during that time? I have not wronged you, but you are doing me wrong by waging war against me. Let the Lord, the judge, decide the dispute this day between the Israelites and the Ammonites. The king of Amorah, however, paid no attention to the messenger Joseph sent him. And then the spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah. He crossed Gilead and Manash, passed through Mesva and of Galilee, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, If you give me the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph, from the Ammonites will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Then Jephthah went over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated twenty towns from Aurora to the vicinity of Meneth, as far as Abel, Hermon. Thus Israel subdued Ammon. When Jephthah returned to his home in Mezbah, who should come out to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of timbrels? She was an only child, except for her he had neither son nor daughter. And when he saw her, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh no, my daughter! You have brought me down, and I am devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. My father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promised now that the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the Ammonites. But grant me this one request, she said. Give me two months to roam the hills and weep with my friends, because I will never marry. You may go, he said, and he let her go for two months. She and her friends went into the hills and wept, because she would never marry. After the two months, she returned to her father, and he did to her as he had vowed, and she was a virgin. From this comes the Israelite tradition that each year the young women of Israel go out for four days to comm commemorate the daughter of Jephthah the Gladiate. Jephthah and Ephraim Judges 12 The Ephraimite forces were called out and they crossed over to Zephon. They said to Jephthah, Why did you go to fight the Amorites? 
without calling us to go with you. We are going to burn down your house over your head. And Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites, and although I called you, you didn't save me out of their hands. And when I saw that you wouldn't help, I took my life in my hands and crossed over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave me the victory over them. Now, why have you come up today to fight me? Jephthah then called together the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim. The Gileads struck them down because the Ephraimites had said, You gladiates are a renegades from Ephraim and Manesh. While the gladiates captured the fords of the Jordan leading to Ephraim, and whenever a survivor of Ephraim said, Let me cross over, the men of Gilead asked him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he replied no, they said, All right, says Shibboleth. Uh, if he said Shibboleth because he could not pronounce the word correctly, they seized him and killed him at the fords of the Jordan. Forty-two thousand Ephraimites were killed at that time. Jephthah led Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gladiite died and was buried in a town in Gilead. Ebizon, Elion, and Abaddon. After him, Ezban of Bethlehem led Israel. He had thirty sons and thirty daughters. He gave his daughters away in marriage to those outside his clan, and for his sons he bought, brought in thirty young women as wives for out, from outside his clan. Esben led Israel seven years. Then Esben died and was buried in Bethlehem. After him, Elion the Zebulonite led Israel ten years. Then Elion died and was buried in Azashan, in the land of Zebulun. And after him, Abaddon, son of Heli, from Parathon, led Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy donkeys. He led Israel eight years. Then Abaddon, son of Heliel, died and was buried at Parathon in Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. That was Judges 11 through 12. Now we will be turning to Luke 6. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Luke 6. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is law, lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is a Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, and so they watched him closely 
to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the men with the, with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and he stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. The Twelve Apostles One and one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him, and he chose twelve of them, whom he also had designated apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alephus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Esperet, who became a traitor. Blessings and woes. He went down to with them, and he stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because the power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject you and your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is the reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. And woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. And woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how your ancestors treated the false prophets. And that was Luke 6, 1 through 26, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Judges 13 through 15 and Luke 6, 27 through 49. I'd like to thank you, Father, for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you, folks, for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. And as um, always, you know, God loves you, and so do I, so come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, God willing, we'll be here, and we hope that you are, too.